What's going on everybody? Day back again and today we're going to be taking a look at my first creature caster kit. Alright, so I ended up picking this up as a Merry Christmas to myself. I ended up seeing this kit and I I actually fell in love with it. It actually reminds me of something that PK King would have done and it kind of falls in around about that scale. So I think it'll look good on the shelf with the PK stuff. This of course is from Creature Caster, which does monsters, very big monsters for uh, gaming, B mostly Age of Sigmar, Warhammer, things like that. They've made uh, some Slanesh and Nurgle proxies, uh, some corn and chaos. And from what I've seen in videos, they look really cool and really detailed. So I've been really curious about how the quality is. And as promised for 2020, I'm going to be focusing more on resin. Well, I'm not breaking that promise. This is resin. So from a resin worker's perspective and, and hobbyist, I want to give you guys my thoughts on their castings and everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post up a picture right now of what the kit is. Do a little slideshow. And now that that's over, we're going to crack this open. And there's one thing that no one has mentioned in any of their videos. You have Product of Canada. So these are cast and made in Canada and they're distributed, I believe, worldwide. But they have a U.S. Uh, distribution warehouse, which is in uh, the Phoenix area, uh, Arizona area, which is where this shipped out from. They are calling this kit a master modeler's version. Uh, because of how detailed it is and I think on their site they actually say that this is their first master modelers but it gives you some recommendation in different languages and one thing I've seen on everybody's box when they pull it out of the main box but no one ever says anything is there's with a gold sharpie sometimes I've seen it in silver uh, the initials of whoever box and packages this up and even though it's something simple, I really like that. I, I like that personal touch. And even on the invoice that I ended up getting, um, you know, they signed it off with thanks to me. And it's little touches like that that I really like. So this is going to be Queen of Malefica. There's not very many videos on it. I will put a link down below to both Creature Caster and also their YouTube page, which has a step-by-step -step build on here. Some things that I've had people or seen people complain about is the fact that these don't come with instructions. And I don't really mind because I'm used to getting kits from overseas and other places and it's just a photocopy of a photocopy and you can't really tell you can download the PDF or go to the website and take a look at the instructions on your phone everybody has one you can download them to your computer you can you know zoom in with them and take a look at them and almost every kit that they've done they also have a full 360 and a step-by-step -step build as far as building it up here on YouTube so cracking it open it is in a thin cardboard and I don't mind that, but I like the fact that it comes in in a box. I've seen some people unpack theirs and they and it's in bubble wrap. Uh, this one wasn't. This is exactly I haven't even looked closely at the pieces yet. So I'm excited to do so with you. It's it probably weighs. Uh, I want to say I want to say probably about a pound. And that's why it was marked on the package as a pound. And that's about right. This is a, a bigger kit. Uh, you have one piece that's not in a baggie over here and there is a lot of detail taking a look at just this one piece uh, and I can tell you the resin that's on here is pretty damn good quality. Uh, this is pretty much the same resin that I end up getting for my PK King kits out of Taiwan. So the it's it's light but it's solid. Um, taking a look at this I do not see any bubbles I do not see anything like that though it would probably be kind of hard to tell looking at the the details but man if you like painting and you like detailing this is going to be the kit for you you have all these eyes everywhere you have teeth right here you have more teeth right here you have teeth right here 
you have teeth and skulls and everything else and i think once this is all built up it's about eight inches tall now from what i can tell and i am correct looking at the blinds because i don't know if it's going to show on there if i get zoomed in just right but on here you can tell these these were originally 3d printed uh, i do not uh, believe that any part of this is actually hand sculpted uh, i believe these are all 3d rendered and printed and i can tell if you look right in there you can see the the cross cut lines in there and that's what's telling me that this was originally a 3d printed and there are some other sections that are in here and i don't have an issue with that like that's what part of this is this my overhead light just super i have the iso just completely blown out on here um but that lets you see in better light all of the details there is a mold line that runs right across here up across here across there you do have this little flashing which i think most of that just with the back of a hobby knife um i don't really see any offset just a little bit right here there's a little bit of offset but it's minimal like it's not bad at all you won't even be able to tell but just taking the back of a hobby knife the resin is nice and soft so it is easy to do so and we can just scrape that up get rid of this little bit it kind of looks like intestines so yeah this will be pretty easy to clean up you do have pore marks which they are nice and big and chunky on here so no issues with that all right let's take a look at everything else that comes in here now all of these look like uh, very reminiscent of forge world stuff you've got the little wedges you have all your parts that are numbered I think they did a good job on that. You have this one that is in bubble wrap. You have a nice big, I believe 100 millimeter base. You have their logo on the bottom of the base. The bottom of the base itself isn't too bad. Things lock in, you kind of have a little seam line, but where I don't have an issue with this being 3D printed, um, you guys know I've reviewed some stuff that's 3D printed. I have some minis that are being sent uh, to me from a uh, Etsy company to review and do some tutorials on a uh, proper way of priming and stuff. So they reached out to me. They'll be coming here in a couple of weeks. With the way 3D printers are now and the way that they're able to be so detailed and so finely printed, especially the resin, the resin ones, I don't have an issue with those. The older ones where you can visibly see the lines in the pieces as they're being printed, those are what I have an issue with and those uh, I don't like because it just causes more headache but the base itself looks pretty damn good and when you do do 3d printing you're allowed to do uh, stuff like that uh, I think this piece this piece appears to fit right into there and while we're on camera let me just grab nippers here I'm just going to use my thumb and knock the flashing off of this edge It is soft enough. I'm not having any issue trimming that down. There is a pretty good offset on here. If I, there's not an offset on this side, but let me finish trimming this off and trimming it down. One of the things I recommend is just shave it down. Don't try and take too big of chunks. Um, but there does appear to be, if, if you look right here, there is an offset right there and it, that's probably about a one millimeter offset. But it's on the underside so you're not really going to end up seeing it and there may be something that butts up against that that i am that i'm not seeing um, but there is an offset with that all that's telling me is that the molds that they're using because um, i know they do hand pour these and i'm pretty sure since there's no bubbles that they're pressure casting it just tells me that their molds maybe aren't hard enough or the shells on them so right out of the box that does fit pretty well um, it does need to be hit with probably some warm water and I usually suggest that anyway is just wash everything and then run it through some warm water like I have a pot of warm water just just simmering to soften up your your resin and part of this could be caused by the base as well but once you end up doing that like warm up this piece and this piece mesh them together press them and if you guys want me to actually physically show you how to do that I'm more than happy to just leave a comment down below that you want me to show you step by step on how to fit these like warming them and everything and I'll be happy to do that I'll drag you guys down to the kitchen set up some camera stuff down there 
but once you end up heating up the base and this piece and then press them together it should fill up almost that whole gap mold both pieces together then run it under cold water and you'll be set all right let's see what else we got we got another baggie and another baggie now it looks like you have uh, plenty of vents and pours i'm going to assume that like this one is a pour in and vents that's how it usually ends up being done there is flashing on all of the pieces this section in here just needs to be scraped out again you know if you're not willing to take the time to clean up pieces and make them look good then you just shouldn't be messing with resin at all there are some things here that it kind of makes it look like a mold line but it's not because there's flesh and then there's what looks like a gum line and then teeth in there so be cautious when you're scraping that up to not overdo it and not scrape things that don't need to be scraped you should have a mold line that runs right across here and i can see it minimal no complaints when it comes to this stuff i am not going to really worry about that uh, you do have a couple spots i'm not sure if these are supposed to be in there or what ends up happening sometimes is you'll get in little pockets you'll get these little like resin balls and that's what it looks like is in there pretty common no big deal a lot of times you can just take a tip of an exacto knife and pop in there and they'll just pop out like i said they're just little resin balls that get in reservoirs again over here you do end up with some little spots like these that that when they've printed them i'll cut this out so you guys can see it better like this piece right here this was a support and it was probably printed with that so that it's so that it kept its shape and there's another one right here but that's also handy for when they're molding it so it'll allow when you pour the resin in this way and you're pressure casting it it presses all the way down to these parts here and then all the way back up you have venting 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 and that's how it ends up working you have um, usually a cavity you pour it up you jiggle it you try and get out all the air that you can then you put it in a pressure pot they could have done this in the mold or they could have cast it this way and odds are that they just put this in the mold this one is kind of bent probably should be a little more straight so that tells me that this piece is a little off no big deal again just warm it up probably with a hair dryer some warm water and it'll get set in there but all of these will have to get knocked out for those of you that are screaming oh i didn't get a rubble uh, bubble wrap around mine resin is a lot more resilient than you think that it is so here is one of the back pieces for it and it has a very egyptian-esque uh, vibe to it and i like it it's nice and thick on this piece and i was wondering how thick this was going to be and if it was even possible to possibly slice this down and put uh, clear acetate in there to give it a windowed effect on here but i'm not even going, i'm not even going to bother with that but yeah it looks real good no real seam line uh, in here, just just a little bit. You have a little offset, probably about uh, half a millimeter of uh, uh, mold offset right here. Not a big deal. Trust me, when you've seen some of the kits that I have, you, you'll be like, Duh. okay, so here we are with part 24, 25 and 26. And I'm gonna assume that this piece came off of here. Again, cast real well. I haven't seen not a air bubble anywhere in here. Uh, you've got this one right here looks good make sure and pay attention that you trim only what needs to be trimmed you've got these pieces you've got these pieces and all that is is allowing for the resin to make it all the way down to the bottom all the way back up and fill up all these crevices with all the details number 29 another tentacle 28 another tentacle there's so many tentacles and teeth with this and i still i still need to you know count all the parts and everything here's another piece of that back piece so you've got it's going to be like that uh, two more tentacles i'm not sure if i'm working on a warhammer piece or hyente this is what i wanted to see so she was wrapped in a bubble wrap so that is good and this is her body right here so as far as for her body there is just a little seam right across here we'll just slightly do it oh, this is going to be such a blessing to work with like lightly sanding and that's where i get scared is when you get into bodies and faces and you have big offsets and then you have to try and basically re-sculpt the piece this very minimal easy peasy so i love all the detail that's on here though 
she is gorgeous you have wings look at these wings like so much detail in in this and yes you could sculpt these but it'd be a nightmare and you're if this was sculpted first of all i don't think you'd ever end up getting the details that are on these scrolls uh, or on this cloth i don't think you'd ever get that on a sculpted piece plus the cost of this it's only about 129 i want to say you would never get a piece like this for 129 dollars if it was completely hand sculpted here is another one of the wings that goes down the center i believe and the last wing so very nice i haven't come across any broken pieces yet like the only loose pieces that i've ended up finding are from um from the sprues so you've got this piece which is a staff you've got this piece which has this hieroglyphic uh type stuff on here very nice the matching side you've got this piece right here just very nicely detailed and one last baggie all right and this appears to be all the tiny pieces so you have part 51 50 and 49 and this is one of the faces and i'm not sure which face that i'm going to end up using on here uh, i kind of like this one but where is the other one where's our other face no no there it is so you have a face which is very reminiscent of um the bird of change there's tongue for it and i don't know uh i like i like this one myself so i think i'm going to stick with the female profile uh head on here i like that one the best but yeah here's the other face the alternate face or head that you can end up using and the tongue and here's something that i thought was unique where's my other part of the book here it is so you have the inside of this book which has scrolls and everything and then it fits inside of here and just test feed just just like that it's fitting perfect but here's the thing they didn't have to cast this in two separate pieces they could have just cast it in one but i i like the fact that they did it this way that way they could keep um all of the detail and all of the the everything just the crispness and straightest that they could here are some of the hands no broken fingers everything is looks looks great as far as hands go now you got some arms with armbands and decorations hanging off of very very nice you've got a sword with a bunch of guts and stuff hanging off of it uh, you get some bone pieces which i think are just parts of armor you've got two more arms on here again very minimal offset um, there is a little bit but it's very minimal you get uh, a couple of these these are um, banners that hang off of different pieces more tentacles and i'm not sure what part i think this might be part of the staff more arms yeah i think she has four arms or eight, six arms something like that you have her feet which are bird and there's a little bit of seam offset on here which has texture that goes across and this is what this is what i dislike so my pain in the rear is if i get that in focus is right there so you have that seam that runs right across here right across that and that's going to be such a pain in the butt to get that even and make it look right um so we'll have to see on that the underside isn't isn't bad and just it's more work is all that it is um, on here you have the seam offset right there and you have uh if you've ever seen birds they have that uh reptilian texture to their feet like chicken feet and everything and you have a seam line that runs right across that so trying to keep preserve that detail while trying to get rid of that seam line i mean if you don't care about the seam line then i wouldn't even worry about it um, but i want to try and make the build as perfect as possible before any paint ends up getting to it because once you paint on that it's just going to accentuate it um, you have this piece not sure what it goes to you have these two pieces and that is it all right boys and girls so here is your pile of the creature caster queen of malefica and i i am so here's my thing i am highly impressed this is my first creature cast kit i purchased this with my own money it wasn't sent to me for review 
I really like the detail. I'm going to have to play around with it, get cleaned up, get it shaped right. And I want to try and magnetize part of this because I know uh, looking at the instructions and watching the build video of it a couple times that it has to be done in sections like after it's painted to be able to do it properly. And I'm going to try and magnetize and do some pinning to where it can be done in sections. But at the same time, I can have it built up and put on a shelf just, just for show for right now. Is it worth the $129? Hell yes. For for what you get, uh, having it all laid out here, and, and I mean, as it is, there's parts piled on top of parts. You definitely get your money's worth it. Once you open everything up, I don't think I could get this back in the box uh, that it came out of. So props to them on how it's built. Props to them for zero bubbles um, and a very clean casting. I know I've been critical on some of the off seam offsets and to you guys over at Creature Caster, I apologize. That's how I am. That's how I do. Uh, I've been building resin for many years and I'm very critical on, um, on details and stuff. I, and I'm probably more critical than anyone else will be here on YouTube, but that's why, that's why some people like me and some people don't is that I'm very critical on quality and detail, especially of a resin, uh, because I know what goes into creating casting um producing packaging and receiving so as i said in the beginning i'll put a link down below to one their youtube page which has all of the parts um laid out and they have a how to build video and then i will also put a link to the creature caster site which you can select your country if you're wanting to order i think it was 12 dollars or something like that for um, priority mail shipping which was automatic. It didn't give me any other option than priority, which I don't mind. I prefer that. Uh, I am going to place another order probably later this month. I want to try some of their paints. I want to pr uh, try their unicorn goop uh, for brush cleaner. I just, between purchasing this, I couldn't afford to pick up paints and other things to review um, from them. And I will do that later this month. If you guys want to see a video of how to clean up the seam lines on this and prepare it and heat it up and prime it and do all of that um, definitely let me know down below your feedback helps me immensely and then also stay tuned because later probably this month I'm going to have a pile of minis from a company on Etsy that wanted me to do reviews and do some uh, how-to videos on how to prime and just do basic stuff uh, for their purchasers uh, and so that their purchasers can see their quality and get uh, get my opinion on there thank you guys for hanging out with me and as usual YouTube I will see you guys all in the next video. Happy 2020. Peace out.